what's inside. Okay, it looks like dental torture devices, <laughs> so. It's time to start sawing into this cabinet. Today we're gonna to start working on the bathroom vanity, which I will be making out of this amazing, almost antique sewing machine cabinet. And I say almost antique because it has to be 100 years old or older to technically be an antique, otherwise it's vintage, but this is pretty close. I think this is like made in the late 20s, early 30s, close enough. But it's so beautiful. I love this burl wood happening here and has this beautiful trim work. I just love everything about it. And it's going to be the perfect vanity for the bathroom because once I remove the sewing machine from the inside, it will leave this perfect open space for all that plumbing. And then I'll put a sink up top and it's gonna be the perfect height to wash your hands. As a bonus, I'll also be able to remove that sewing machine, restore it and use it as decor in my home. And it's almost the same age as my home. So it's kind of a perfect match, but First, I'm gonna go ahead and go through some of the things that I found inside. A little backstory on this piece. I found it on Facebook Marketplace. The woman I bought it from said that it was her grandmother's. She said the sewing machine probably didn't work and I tried it and did not work. And she said that her grandmother made all of her clothes, all of the clothes for their family for so long. And then one day they took her to Sears and she saw a button up there and it was just so much cheaper than it would even cost her to make and so she was like oh well that's it then and hung up her hat that day and no longer used the sewing machine it's been sitting in storage ever since and i so happily came across it but because she never used it again it also has all of her old things in it so i'm really excited today i'm gonna remove the drawers from the inside and i'm gonna show you what i find it'll also be my first time seeing them so Let's see what's inside. Okay, drawer number one, and it also had this little tin box in it. So let's see what's inside. I learned everything I know about antiques from watching other people and going to antique stores, but I know some things. So for example, like plastic and acrylic like this weren't used until mid-century onwards. So she probably bought these bobbins and things later on. Got some made in Japan sewing needles. We bought some west germany sewing needles so again this is another thing that helps you pinpoint the time like how old this is west germany was after world war ii but obviously pre-80s when the berlin wall came down so western germany we have some more western germany sewing materials i love this little rose it's cute i think this is like a machine oil maybe i don't know Let's look in this box, which is just a really cool box anyway. Like, I would use this for storage. Oh. Okay. I love this purple. I will say this kind of looks like dental torture devices. <laughs> so, that's interesting. But they are attachments, it seems. It says, like, a hammers, braider foot, a binder. So, all different attachments for the sewing machine. But I just love this box. The black on the outside, the purple on the inside. It's kind of Halloween. I love it. Delightful. Another box. This is the brand White, which is the same as the sewing machine. But obviously, because this is plastic, we know it's more mid-century. I love that. I just love old branding like this. Like, how cool is this? I love the colors. I love the different font choices. And it's just the mix of different illustration styles. I wish things still looked like this. Okay, this looks like Mad Men ads. That made me happy. These are just instructions for using the white magic key buttonhole. And it's the cutest tool too. I love this mid-century design. It has all these, looks like attachments and I'll definitely use this whenever I get a sewing machine that works. I'll be using a lot of these things um, if they still work for modern machines. One more drawer. Here's this drawer. It also had this little plastic guy that was full of more machine parts. Ooh, something inside. Looks like a little lipstick too. Oh, sewing machine needles. They look very sharp. Be careful with those. Elastic sewing thread from, ooh, 1952. Okay, so that helps us place 
at least some of the things in here. It's probably early 50s that she bought a lot of this stuff. Some old hook and eyes. All sorts of fun stuff. Like one of the reasons I really love antiques, it's like someone allowing you to take a museum piece or a treasure home. That's something I can do. And yes, you can. Like, that is a special thing about antiques. It is as if someone has allowed you to take a time capsule, put it in your home, and you get to look at it every day, and only you get to look at it, or any guests that you invite into your home. I just think they're so special. I love the stories behind them. I love that the woman I bought this from told me about her grandmother and how she used to use this and the role it played in their family. Let's get to work on this cabinet. First, I'll remove the sewing machine. Well, first I'll show you how the sewing machine works, and then we'll figure out how to remove it clean it out, and then I think tomorrow I'll start working on refurbishing the wood itself because there are a couple dings and pieces missing and we'll get it back to tip top shape. find where it attaches from the top which means it probably attaches from the inside so it might be time to google how to remove an old sewing machine because there is not a very clear way how to do so it's a new day ready to restore this thing. So the top's in pretty good condition and you can see all the sides as well. There are just a couple parts where the veneer has come off on this side and then on the back as well. So what I'm gonna do is fill this with wood filler. I'm gonna wait for it to dry. Probably sand the whole top down so we have a nice even surface and then I will uh, stain and eventually seal. I'll probably have several coats of poly on top because it's gonna have a sink on it, it's gonna get wet and I want it to be protected. Okay, it's now sanded and smooth. What I wanna do next is see if I can restore the top without sanding it. It is veneer, which I can tell because I can see the division between the veneer pieces. So it could potentially go poorly if I try to sand it too much, but if it's unable to restore any other way, I'll have to sand it. But first we try my favorite restoring solution. This stuff is liquid magic, so we're gonna see if it works to restore this finish without me having to sand it. That's the goal. If not, sanding. That did help a lot. Well, some of these fine lines are still here, but the thing is, I'm gonna have a sink setting on top of this. So you won't be able to really see a lot of the imperfections still happening, and it's an antique, so it doesn't need to look perfect in my opinion. Now that we've gotten it to this stage, and I know I'm not going to sand the top down, I'm gonna go ahead and put some gel stain on the wood filler parts and let that dry and then we'll be able to do a top coat in 24 hours. And then in the meantime, I will use Restore Finish on the rest of the base. Here's the gel stain I'm using. I love this one for antiques, antique walnut. It's usually a pretty good color match for this kind of wood. And that's all it takes and I'll leave that just for a little bit and then I'll wipe it off. Something to note, while I was applying the Restore Finish, I tried to avoid the parts with wood filler because the gel stain and the Restore Finish don't get along very well. The Restore Finish will repel the gel stain, so you could just wait for a Restore Finish to dry, but since I am impatient, I just avoided the wood filler spots.
The gel stain was coming across a little too dark for my liking, so instead I'm going to try this water glazed wood stain in antique walnut and just kind of paint it on and see how that looks. It's a new day, my touch-ups have a time to dry, and it's also cool enough to apply poly and it not get streaky. So we'll do that now. I'm gonna end up applying three coats in total and then I'll sand between each coat. The top is done. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's an antique, so it has some character. And next steps, I will install the sink, and then I'll complete this. It's time to install the sink, which means it's time to start sawing into this cabinet. So we're gonna try to be precise as possible so that we don't make any unnecessary cuts. I don't know why I'm using the Royal We, but I am. Great. The sink came with this template, so this is what I need to cut out for the sink top. I have my drill here to make the pilot holes on the corners, and then my jigsaw to cut out the hole. Once I cut out this hole, I will take the cabinet inside and then figure out what I need to cut out on the back so that the plumbing can come in and up, and then I will bring it back out, cut that, and then we'll hopefully be done. It's pretty straightforward but it's also nerve wracking because it's cutting into a beautiful antique cabinet. It'll be fine. It fit perfectly. I'm honestly so proud of myself <laughs> because I usually have such a hard time with the jigsaw. This is the first time I've really done the jigsaw properly and it's definitely on a piece where I needed to do it properly. I only made the cuts I had to on here. So now the last thing I need to do today is I'm gonna apply silicone sealant to the bottom of the sink and then put it in place. And then I will let that cure overnight at the very least, and then that will kind of cement it in place so that I can start doing the plumbing without jostling the sink around and moving it. But wow, I think the hard part is done, hopefully. I mean, you never know with plumbing, but I'm pretty happy with that. let that sit and firm up and then I'll come back tomorrow and we can start installing things. I did it. I plumbed the sink vanity situation. Let me walk you through what I did. I didn't film it because it was a little stressful. Also very tight space with very poor lighting and I had to make several trips to the hardware store to find things in order to kind of jerry rig this into working for this space and had to order new water lines, et cetera, because the ones that came with the faucet weren't long enough. Anyway, let me show you what I did so you can see exactly. You can also see that this is part of the original sewing cabinet. It is part of the mechanism that pushed the sewing machine up. And I didn't want to get rid of it because there's really no reason to. And also it helps to disguise some of the plumbing now if you were to open the cabinet, so all the better. But if you can see behind it, I have the drain installed and then we've got water lines and everything over here. I use these flexible couplers to attach the bends and things because the drain is over here, but the outlet for the wall where the drain goes out of is way over here. So I had to make some weird bends and things happen. And in order to do that, I needed to use some creative plumbing. And I hooked up the water lines and I tightened everything and there are no more leaks except for that one I just saw, which I'm gonna tighten up now. And I think we're finally ready 
to do finishing touches. And so the last things that are left is that I'm going to kickstart the aging process on the unlacquered brass up in the sink. And then I'm just going to silicone the sink faucet in place and let it dry. And then it's done. Beef, what do you think? Are you impressed with mom? He could care less, very rude. The next step in here is that I'm going to age the unlacquered brass using brass ager. And since this stuff is too big to dip into the brass ager and I've already attached it, I am just going to rub it with a rag that I dampen with the brass ager and let it do its magic. First, I'm gonna get this protective seal off this drain. Gosh, it's so pretty. I love this stuff. And that's how the drain works. It's like a pop up, pop down. Eee! It's so cool. Let's age this thing. I might have two gloves because I have a feeling this might get messy. concerned because it's not aging well some parts of the sink and so I was like well I wonder if it's solid brass it does seem to be solid brass it's not magnetic which is a good way to tell that but it may just have a little bit of lacquer on it even though this was supposed to be unlacquered so we'll just have to see if so I may need to use I don't know acetone or something to get this off but everything else aged really nicely. This part and the drain, just not the knobs and not the neck. TBD. I did reach out to the seller and he did assure me that it is all unlacquered brass and I let the ager sit longer and it is clear it's aging, but it just ages differently than the smooth brass. And then the knobs also started aging as well, but they just age slower than the other parts of the brass. So I don't know, he told me he spent longer polishing these, so maybe that made a difference, but it is starting to age and it will just continue to age over time, but it's already a lot less shiny than it was. And hopefully you can kind of see now the vision of how this fits in in here, because there's also gonna be, you know, polished nickel hand towel things so that we have the mixed metals. Um, but this is now a much more subdued brass than the shiny gold brass it was before. So I'm going to show you a full view of the vanity and I hope you love it. I'm obviously not in my home. I'm visiting my parents right now and I'm in my childhood home, but as a bonus in the background, you get to see this beautiful toucan that I drew in preschool. So pretty great, right? <laughs> but I just wanted to come back here and wrap up the vanity video and give a little more behind the scenes as to why I decided to do this. I had actually purchased a prefabbed vanity because I was really nervous about the idea of building one myself or adapting an antique into one. And then as I was working on the bathroom, I realized the one I bought was not gonna fit style-wise in the room. And I had worked up the courage enough at that point to say, maybe I can do this. So I ended up selling the prefabbed one I bought and started my search for the perfect antique cabinet. And I found one that was so beautiful and it ended up being a lot easier than I had expected. I think one of the hardest parts was finding one with the right dimensions, but getting the sewing machine out was fairly simple. Cutting all of the holes for plumbing ended up being a lot simpler than I'd expected. Happy surprise. And I was pretty familiar with plumbing from working on the other bathroom sink. So it ended up being kind of a breeze, which is so nice. It does not happen for every project I work on. I do wanna talk a little bit about the sink because a lot of vessel sinks, which are sinks that sit on top of a surface, 
are shaped to look really like vessels, like bowls or something that's sitting on top of a piece of furniture. And for this, I really wanted it to look almost as if this was always a vanity. So I chose a sink that was almost the entire width and length of the vanity top. And I just really think that makes it look like it was always meant to be that way. And also it leaves less wood surface on the tabletop exposed for potential water damage, which is a nice bonus. The sink itself is made of a material called fire clay, which is apparently harder and more durable than porcelain. And I'm hoping it will just last forever. I really want this to be something that will stand the test of time and get even better with age. And that's also why I chose an unlacquered solid brass faucet, which I just love. And it's just gonna continue to darken and get that beautiful patina as it ages. And I love aged darkened brass. And I know that's not for everyone. There are definitely people out there who like it shinier and a little more gold. For me, I just like it darker. And also with my house being older and having a lot of antique brass already inside, I think it fits the style. So I just think this piece is just gonna get even more beautiful with time. And I'm so happy with how it turned out. I hope it was interesting watching me do this. And if you have been nervous about doing this yourself, I hope it also gives you the confidence that you can do it too. Cause I really was nervous and it ended up being a lot simpler than I had expected. If you have any questions about the vanity or anything else, please leave it in the comments and I'll happily respond. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications and that way you'll get updated every time I post a new video. So thank you for being here and I'll see you next time.